Good morning and thank you for joining us on our free Friday webinars. My name is Michelle Mott and we've actually pre-recorded this webinar because I'm actually facilitating strategic planning uh, with a healthcare client in St. Louis uh, today. But if you do have any technical difficulties, please reach out to Dana in our office at 515-221-2688. So to get started, since many of you are joining us for the first time, we want to give you a couple of tips to make the most out of your webinar experience. We use Zoom as our platform, and there's a couple of features that are neat. Uh, first of all, you can zoom in and zoom out, uh, depending on how large you'd like the screen uh, to show or display. If you're watching with a group of folks, feel free to project it up on a screen for everyone's viewing pleasure. Hopefully you've uh, been able to adjust the sound so it's uh, comfortable for you. There's also a feature that we won't be using today, but it's a chat box that can allow you to ask questions and answer uh, anything that I might be asking you, but I'll do that uh, probably in later sessions. And then uh, to communicate, you'd be using the drop down uh, feature so that people could uh, read any of your responses as well as your questions. The purpose for these webinars is to allow everyone to receive some monthly motivation on a variety of different topics and to expose you to one of our inspiring programs or products. So for this month, we've uh, included, along with our instructions, the handouts that we're going to be using. And we're going to cover the purpose and benefits for strategic planning. We're going to actually explore the 10 steps of the process and then help you to take some of those first steps in scheduling what we call a pro treat. Uh, yes, I call it a pro treat versus a retreat because it's a proactive way of developing and focusing your leaders. So like I said, the attached documents are what we're going to be referring to not only during our webinar, but I'll encourage you to use it for a reference afterwards. And as you close out of the webinar, remember to take a couple minutes to answer a couple of questions and suggestions for future topics. You may have noticed that when you logged in and even when you pre-registered, you were asked about the timing or the length of time for each webinar. In uh, 2020, we wanted to revisit the length of the workshops. We've gone from an hour to now a 30 minute and we're thinking maybe 45 minute might be a sweet spot, but, but we'd like to hear from you. So please give us your input. So for starters, we're gonna share with you a quote from Henry David Thoreau. Never look back unless that is the way you are planning to go. Which means, especially as we end up the year 2019, you can learn from what you've done and experienced in 2019, but what you really wanna do is take that knowledge and wisdom and focus on your future success. So what is strategic planning? Like I said, it is a proactive process to assess the current condition of your organization, uh, to determine a desired future state, and identify or create an action plan or steps to achieve that purpose or that future. And we find that it is a helpful in any size organization. We've worked with multi-sites, of the large organizations, we've worked at small businesses. We've even done this for departments such as human resources or any a project team that wants clarity on its members, its resources, and to be efficient with its outcomes. So if you're using the handout and following along, I'd like for you to consider that strategic planning is like vacation planning. And prior to going on vacation, as well as prior to starting strategic planning, you need to answer and address a couple of questions. First of all, where are we now? Um, part of that is understanding the dynamics of your organization or the situation at hand. And we'll talk about that phase here in a minute. Then the question is, once you get started, where are we going? In other words, where do you want to take the organization, the department, its leaders? Once that's been defined, then you define the meat of the plan where you put on put some action steps. In other words, who's going to do what by when. And finally, instead of just creating a plan that never gets looked at, we encourage our clients to incorporate a review 
progress check on a regular basis, which addresses the question, how are we doing? So one of the first worksheets that we're gonna explore is what I call the strategic planning pyramid. And it's done for a couple of reasons. One is, as you know about the structure of a pyramid, it takes a solid foundation to make sure that you're making good uh, structure or in this case, good decisions. So the first question, where are we now, covers the first four steps and we'll talk more specifically about those steps. Once that occurs, then you move on to the next three steps and it addresses where are we going, creating what I call guiding statements, mission, vision, values, etc. Then you put the meat on the plans where you identify based on your strategic issues, how are you going to get there? And then finally, like we said, one of the ways to help you make sure that you live up to your goals and you follow through on your ideas is to continually and constantly monitor your progress. And with all of those questions being critical, you're then going to take some of the first steps. The first step in the phase one, where are we now, is intentionally to plan to plan. So again, if you're following along, fill in the blank, the word plan. What this means is you need to intentionally decide that you are going to plan and when that's going to occur. So you answer the questions here on the screen as well as on your handout, who's gonna be involved? And we're gonna talk about what's called the planning team uh, in the next couple slides. What, what do you hope to accomplish? When would you like it to occur? Will it be during the week or maybe it be off uh, site over the weekend? Uh, where will you have it? Like I said, a lot of times people like to get away from the busyness of the workplace, also to avoid interruptions, so they go off site. Uh, the why question is probably one of the first questions we'll be asking you to think about today. Why or what do you hope to accomplish with the process? And then finally, the last question in the plan to plan is how are you going to accomplish it? Uh, the client that I happen to be working with today has in the past done strategic planning, but it's primarily been led by one of the board members. Well, that really distracts that board member from adequately and completely participating in discussions. So they've hired me to help facilitate their process. Uh, like I mentioned, the planning team is made up of maybe you know a dozen or so people, representatives of senior leadership. You've got a board of directors, it could be the board. And I do like to have a blend of those two different groups because the just more trustees, then it tends to have more of a strategic and it doesn't necessarily have a practical application. So I like the blend of both. So if you get the senior team or your admin team together with your board and maybe even involve some key players such as employees, customers, or stakeholders involved, you'll truly have the proper blend of a strategic plan. Now, like I said, my role uh, is to make sure that the planning team uh, stays focused, looking at the data, speaks on behalf of everyone involved in the process, not just the, those that are in attendance. Uh, they do an honest evaluation or assessment of the organization, which helps to create the plan. And once that pro treat is done, and we typically take no more than two days to do that, uh, it's your, their job to actually figure out the communication plan. In other words, how are you going to roll out, communicate, and get the rest of the organization excited about the plan? Getting other key stakeholders involved. Now, key, sto key stakeholders could be the members of the planning team itself, which means board, management leaders, key, key uh, employees. And it's these folks that truly help to implement and monitor the progress along the way, giving feedback to not only the process, but to the uh, progress of the plan being implemented, and then commit to refining and updating the plan on an annual basis. So what that means is if you have already done a strategic plan, one of the things that I'll be asking for in the front end is what are you working from? What's the current plan or the guiding statements? Regardless of the condition, at least it gives us something to work from. 
my role is to know enough to be dangerous. I always tell people that I come prepared to ask critical questions, guide you through the process, keep you involved and focused, but really through the questions that I ask, I want you to share your ideas, your expertise, and challenge you to make the decisions because I truly believe if you develop the plan, you're gonna be much more excited and will also hold each other accountable. That's the first step. And as you can tell, it's intentional because very unlikely do you decide one day to go on vacation the next. It takes intentional prior preparation. Step number two in the question of where are we now is one of the two analysis. Uh, the step two looks at external analysis. And we're gonna take a look at some of the examples listed there on your handout, as well as on the slide. The first analysis is what's called the stakeholder analysis. And I mentioned this earlier. A stakeholder is anyone who has a vested interest in your success. So like listed here on the illustration, it could be your employees, it could be your customers, your patients, your residents, clients, whatever you refer to them as. It could be vendors, it could be significant uh, suppliers, it could be your banker, um, it could be the government because they also could influence you. And it's this exercise that helps everyone realize that it really is within these relationships that you need to maximize your effectiveness. Then another part of the external analysis is to like, take a look at the marketplace. In other words, what's going on? What are some of the trends? What's happening that's going to be affecting your business or your industry? Then you tune into who are your uh, competitors. And I always think of competitors from two perspectives. One uh, is from a consumer perspective. And the other, believe it or not, especially in the un low unemployment rate, who are trying to attract and retain the same quality employees that you are. And that really gives you an idea of what makes you better, different, and unique and what is their brand so you can distinguish yourself from the rest. Another is to dig deeper into what you provide your customers. And again, I'm using customer as a generic term. Again, it could be a patient, resident, client, whatever you refer to them as. But you're taking a look at all the different things that you provide for them and what's the 80-20 rule? The 80-20 rule is that 20% of the world's wealth is owned within 80% of the world's population. Conversely, I believe in the workplace, 20% of the people do 80% of the work. And might you find that to be true? But in this customer analysis, you're basically understanding better about your profile of a customer. In other words, what are some of their common characteristics? What's important to them? You know, if you're dealing with women, for instance, uh, one of the common characteristics is that they like to shop, they love bargains. What's important to them is family time, or at least that sense of security. Why do they buy from you? Maybe you've established that personal touch. Uh, how does what you do vary from product to product or geographically? I know in some cases you may have a franchise type concept, but given the uh, occupations, given the uh, customer base, you may choose to have some variances. And then finally, are there any other significant factors uh, that influence your decision makers? Once you've done all the analysis, and a lot of times it's an educational component for the planning team, you sit back and think about how comfortable are you as the leaders of the organization with risk? So the lowest risk using this uh, Z model illustrates that it's easiest, safest, the least amount of rent or least amount of risk to look at what you're currently providing to your current customers and then basically just make improvements. However, you might want to move on to the next uh, level of risk and that is trying to introduce new products, new services to existing clients or customers. We think that sometimes we uh, need to provide variety Yet, I've got several of clients that are doing the same thing over and over again, and it's working for them. 
The third level of risk is when you try to bring in new customers. As many of you may know, on average, it costs 6% to hire, train, and bring to fully uh, transition uh, up to productivity a new employee as well as a new customer. So the risk factor is the highest when you say, oh gosh, if we only did this, if we only had that, we could attract a whole new customer base. For instance, um, in look, working on long-term care, uh, one of the uh, thoughts was we need to have a golf course because we know that if we were to have a golf course, we would attract a much younger population. Well, that may not be true because people may be choosing to stay at home or other alternatives for care in a longer. Now, the uh, conclusion of this exercise is to really help you identify your uh, growth options. Are you gonna diversify? Are you gonna integrate, which means adding similar or interrelated products? Are you gonna make improvements or turn about current products to better serve the needs uh, of your customers? Um, you might be uh, doing something that's depleting your resources. So you might want to use, it's called a military term, but you might want to retrench or do less or eliminate something completely. And then finally, you may be ready to do a little bit of everything or each multiple strategies. So that really gets the planning team to talk where they're feeling. Then you do one of the first four uh, SWOT analysis. What that means is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And we typically will start, especially if we're looking at uh, the outside of a highly competitive organization, what are some of its opportunities? In other words, what are some of those things that you could do or would like to do to better position yourself in the marketplace, give you that competitive advantage, not only for its, its customers, but for its employees, what could you do to better serve your current and prepare you for meeting the future needs of others? And you'll see if you're following along on the slide, there is what's referred to as a pre-planning questionnaire. This is something uh, that I like to do with every client because it gets the ideas a rolling and it helps to accelerate our group discussions. And then the last part of this step is to do a, a, th a threat analysis. Here what you're doing is you're taking a look at what might prevent you or challenging you from being successful, what factors impact your customers, and a lot of this again comes from the pre-planning questionnaire. Once you've done the external analysis, if you're following along, turn to the next page, and we're gonna take a look at what's going on within the organization through an internal analysis. So listed here are some of the ways or things that you're gonna take a look at, such as survey satisfaction. You may be doing a resident or a patient um, or even an employee satisfaction or engagement survey. What are the factors influencing their success? What's the overall level of satisfaction? This is always nice to benchmark or compare yourself with others. And then what are the most important issues from a patient as well as from an employee perspective? And if you as the leaders of the organization can do more of what they'd like, you're gonna be their hero and they're gonna be much more apt to follow your lead or instruction. Another analysis during the internal aspect is to look at what's going on in the financial. Are you struggling to make payroll? Um, what are your sources of income? Are you striving uh, to reduce some of your expenses and where are they coming from? And then finally, what would you say is the overall financial condition of the organization? Like I mentioned, it's always nice to stop and evaluate uh, your products or service line from the standpoint of what needs to be improved, what needs to be reduced or eliminated because you're not getting the return on your time what should be or could be expanded? And finally, what would you like to start or start developing as a result of what's going on in the marketplace? Then at the conclusion of this ex or internal step, you complete the first or the last two 
parts of the SWOT analysis. The first being the strengths. You take a look at and, and you ask, you know, what do you see that we do better than our competition from both a customer as well as an employee perspective? What brings you in excellence? In other words, what is it that makes you different than, better than? And once again, the answers to this will be quantified in a pre-planning questionnaire to get you started. And then the last part of the SWOT analysis is the weaknesses. What you're doing here is taking a look at what are some of the operational uh, problems that you are facing or that keeping you up at night or spending a lot of time. You may have heard from your patients. So what would you say are some of their frustrations or areas of disappointment? Um, you could uh, actually survey them, uh, which is nice because when you do so, they oftentimes feel proud about the fact you cared. And once again, we do ask these questions on the pre-planning questionnaire. So those you can tell take quite a bit of time. Uh, with good data makes good decisions, as you know. So we're going to now complete the last part of the first phase, where are we now, with the strategic profile. The first step is to determine your, your life cycle. Um, a lot of times what that means is a, a business will go through a, a certain uh, stage and depending on what stage, it's not indicating how quickly it happens, you will be either in a growth mode or you're learning and doing new things. You could be also at a maturity level. This is where you are starting to deplete or exhaust your resources. And without any intervention, excuse me, you are going to naturally decline, which depletes your resources, people's energy, excitement, but you could avoid that. Avoiding that means you could choose to rejuvenate. Rejuvenate is a very popular term um, because of the fact there is burnout and oftentimes the um, employees lose that focus. So we find that a lot of times people that want to do strategic plan do so because they're either going through a large degree of change or they just want to help refocus people. Uh, then the next part of this last step is to plan your assumptions. Now, I know that it's oftentimes very difficult to uh, predict with any degree of certain circumstance, but you can identify, at least from a planning perspective, what factors do you believe with a fair amount of confidence are going to change, increase more regulations, decrease in costs, or remain the same. That then creates a top strategic issue. Top strategic issues are no more than, well, in this case, it says eight to 10, but my experience has been it's even been less. Um, I think it truly has been more recently, six to eight. Uh, and the reason being is if you have too many significant in initiatives, it's hard to focus. So it builds upon its strengths, overcomes its weaknesses, pursues happiness, addresses the threats, and considers assumptions. Now, once you've answered the question, where are we now, like this arrow points out, is we now move on to the second phase, which is where are we going? This step is to first of all, take a look at your mission, your vision, and your values. Uh, have they been in place for a while? Do they still make sense? Or has your business shifted? So to start off with, a mission statement is a single statement, oftentimes memorized by everyone in the organization, not only communicated with them, but it also helps other people know how their logo is being recognized. So who could give me an example of a um, employee gift? All right, so obviously one of the things that's important is once you have it, to use it. Uh, this happens to be our mission statement. Uh, we enhance individual team and organizational performance. Can you state yours from memory? Uh, there's great power in vision. Vision without action is merely a dream. 
action without vision just passes the time. But if you put vision with action, you can change the world. And this is by Joel Barker, who does a lot of work in the area of strategic planning and paradigm shifting. A vision statement, different than a mission statement, should be a single statement that describes not what you do, but what you would like to become. And I always like to test a vision statement by asking the same question that kids ask parents while on vacation. And that is, are we there yet? Because if you are, then it's not written with stretch. You wanna make sure that it's something that gives you stretch and something to reach for. Our vision is to be nationally recognized as an invaluable resource for talent development. The sixth step is the philosophy statement. And what I like the way this works out in the pyramid, if you'll notice, it's right at the center of it. And that really is symbolic of what this step does. It looks at the values. What's important to you? What are your beliefs? What are the promises that you're gonna make to each other, with each other, and how you're gonna communicate and interact with each other? Our philosophy is based around six different uh, values. Honesty, integrity, respect, quality, flexibility, and we actually, through the years of our work with healthcare, have added compassion. All right, now if you look at all your guiding statements, your mission, your vision, your values, philosophy, whatever you want to refer to it as, these should not be created and then never communicated. So you'll want to take a look at in what ways are you communicating with your customers through your website or marketing materials? In what ways are you communicating and educating people uh, that work for you or with you, your employees, through hiring or on your orientation, uh, training and development, managing and coaching people to make sure that they are aligned with those guiding statements. Then at the conclusion of where are we going, Step number seven is to create a strategic profile. And what this does is puts together from your top strategic issues, the meat. In other words, it's going to tell you what are the measures of success? What steps are you gonna take? Who are going to be the champions or key players that lead up those action plans? What are the timelines so that you have a sense of urgency? And what are gonna be some of the resources needed? Our top strategic issues evolve around Wiley, which is our source for the Everything Disc product line. We wanna make sure that we take care of our team personally and professionally. We wanna take care of you, our customers, by strengthening our relationships and value-added services. Um, we want to further develop our niche in healthcare. And finally, uh, we wanna revitalize our attitude brand based on the book and other resources that I've created. All right, then we're ready to move on to the third phase. And that is, how do we get there? The purpose of this step, and again, if you're following along on the next page, is to take a look at what is the way in which you're gonna roll out your strategic plan. In other words, do you need to finalize it? Do you need to have other people contribute to it? Do you need to get board approval if they weren't in the, involved in uh, creating it? And in what ways is this gonna be exciting? You know, maybe you have an annual meeting or a quarterly forum or an in-service, but that's a great way to roll out your strategic plan. Then step nine is to actually make sure you implement the plans that you've created by giving it a little reality check. What are gonna be some of the obstacles that you face in implementing your plan? And oftentimes it's time. It could be people's resistance to change it could be our lack of focus. That's why we have the built-in follow-up. And therefore, given those obstacles, what strategies are you going to employ or initiate to overcome them? And one best practice is to make sure that you hardwire or make sure that it's a part of every critical agenda. So you're constantly re reviewing it because accountability matters. Person accountable needs to make sure that they know what's working and what's not with the particular action plan they're assigned. And then finally, the last phase as well as the last step is to answer how are we doing? And what this does is this is the way in which you keep this as an ongoing tool for your direction, 
excitement, and decision making. So in this step, you're going to take a look at how often are you monitoring the progress. In other words, do you do it weekly? Maybe you look at each strategic plan or strategic issue, one per quarter, however you want to do it. But know how often you're going to take a look at how are you going to monitor it through a scorecard or a dashboard. No different than what keeps our interest in watching sports is that dashboard. Are we winning or are we losing? And then monitoring people to do what they said they would do. Uh, we have a dashboard, and I know it's hard to read, but what we have is all of our strategic um, issues for our five issues listed. And then we've created or populated some measures. And I want to thank Dana for being the one who always go out on a quarterly basis and uh, populate this dashboard for our team's use. And then as we wrap up the uh, strategic planning pro treat, as you would, uh, we will make sure that it's very clear as to how uh, the leadership, how the board, how uh, teams are going to ongoingly commit to monitoring the progress. You might bring in me to do a mid-year report or review, as well as commit to doing this on a regular annual basis. I will say, if you can, merge the uh, completion of the strategic plan into the budgetary process, it'll be a much more validated and timely request. All right, so what does an actual strategic plan looks like? Um, on the next page, you'll see as a part of the last step, uh, the components. So for each of the different phases, we document the analysis, we document what you came up for the mission, vision, values, and start to really focus in on those top strategic issues. And with that comes the meat. In other words, how are you gonna get there? What are the goals? What's the plans? And then what did you commit to as far as the implementation and reviewing schedule? So I always pride myself in being able to put a strategic plan on an eight and a half sheet of paper. On one side, I would put your mission, vision, values, and on the other side, you would have your top strategic issues. And virtually every employee would have a copy of this. Maybe you put it out in the payroll stuffers. Maybe you hand it out at a rollout or an annual meeting, but virtually every employee needs to have that for their own decision making. Now, for those of you wanting to take the first couple steps in either launching or maybe revisiting a strategic plan, I have a sample agenda of a two-day process. It doesn't always take two days, but I know that some processes can go on for months. And the challenge with that is that by the time you get the, project, the uh, plan done, things have changed so much that it's out of date. So I really want to get a solid strategic planning team together, do a pro-treat uh, questionnaire, and then use that feedback along with some education, uh, completing the analysis, and create at least a good shell of a plan within two days. As we say, a journey starts, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. So sometimes those first steps can be the hardest, but hopefully today you've gotten some confidence, at least some understanding of what's involved. And if we can further help you, we have a couple of resources, one of which is to schedule a pro treat. Um, you could also go out on our website and purchase an e-handbook that I wrote uh, that gives you kind of the nuts and bolts of the strategic planning process. And we also, if you don't currently administer a survey with either your customers or your employees, we can help you facilitate as well as uh, administer that process for you. Uh, one of the next pages uh, in this material was the webinar uh, special. The outline of the pro treat uh, is listed there. So knowing that you could use this as your own planning for 2020, if you schedule it or at least commit to it by the end of the year, December 31st, we will give you a 25% discount off that process. <coughs> Excuse me, bless me. <laughs> And then finally, uh, we want to continue to include you in our upcoming webinars. We've only got a couple more before the end of the year. 
uh, we're going to do once again 30 minutes at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. Uh, and we've got some exciting guest speakers joining us. Uh, we've got November 15th. I believe uh, Dana might be doing that. At least uh, she might know that now once I, I spill the beans. Uh, December 20th, we want to help you being intentional with your department. And we've got a fabulous guest speaker. Uh, Doreen McVeigh is going to be our guest speaker. We're also going to start off the new year with another fabulous guest speaker, uh, Thea Ducro, who's going to talk about walking in wonder, cultivating creativity for results. I'm going to uh, serve up the seven qualities of a collaborative culture in February, and then also talk about in March how you can use an app called My Everything Disc to improve relationships. Now, something that you may have noticed when you signed in is that we did a poll because we're considering in 2020, uh, how what time frame? 30, 45, or 60 minutes. So please chime in and let us know what you prefer. And your feedback does matter. So once you close out of this, please take a couple minutes and complete the survey that offers not only topics, but suggestions for our 2020 uh, webinar schedule. So with that, uh, Dana and I thank you for making time and joining us today. And please make it a great day for yourself and others.